When Congress leaders disagree publicly with Sonia Gandhi, you know the matter is serious. And that's exactly what happened today. Earlier today, the Supreme Court of India decided to free all six convicts in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. It happened in 1990 in Tamil Nadu. They include Nalini, the woman who Priyanka Gandhi had visited in jail and publicly forgiven. The court released them on the basis of three big points. Number one, this decision is based on the recommendation given by the Tamil Nadu cabinet back in 2018. All six convicts had filed a remission plea with the state governor and since the cabinet's decision is binding on him, the court decided to free the convicts. In May this year, another convict in the case, A.G. Perarivalan, had been released by the top court and in today's judgment, the court said it had used the same criteria for the six as it did for Perarivalan. Essentially, if Perarivalan can walk free, then why not the other six? In that case, the court, in Perarivalan's case, the court had invoked its extraordinary powers under Article 142. Number two. The court noted that all six convicts had exhibited satisfactory behavior in prison and even obtained multiple degrees while they were inside, serving their term. And number three, the court noted that the convicts had spent more than 30 years in prison. That's almost double the normal life sentence. Now, there's a lot of political reaction to this decision, ranging from joy to outrage to absolutely utter disgust. And there are really two debates here. A political one, of course, but a legal one as well. Before we go to the political debate, I want to spend the first few minutes speaking to two lawyers, dissecting the legal nuances of today's verdict. Uh, Namit Saxena is an advocate on record of the Supreme Court. He's joining us on the broadcast. And C. Rajashekharan is a lawyer. He's also a political analyst. He's joining us on the broadcast as well. Uh, Namit, I, I want to start with you. Uh, I want to ask you whether, you know, there is, of course, opposition to what the Supreme Court has said today. There's political opposition by the, uh, by the uh, you know, by the Congress party today, uh, simply because the Congress is arguing that this was the prime minister of a country. And you have allowed his assassins to walk free. This is against the spirit of India. Is the Congress party justified in this criticism, legally speaking? See, legally speaking, what they had, what they did in Perari Valan's judgment, they had to follow this, you know, the same principles in this particular order as well, because the yardstick which they use there has to be, you know, used for similarly situated prisoners also. But there is no question of, you know, see, unlike how we are, you know, looking at it that, you know, they have been allowed to walk free. It is not like this, that the Supreme Court has acquitted them. One, they are established convicts. Second, you know, the, 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 you know, the trial court, the high court and the Supreme Court found this case to be the rarest of rare case where death sentence is to be awarded. And, you know, the judicial system, we have the criminal justice administration, they awarded them death sentence. Why this was converted or this was commuted to a life sentence was because after Shatrudan Chauhan's judgment, if there is a delay in deciding mercy petitions or clemency petitions, that delay is, acts as a mitigating factor to convert or to commute the death sentence into life imprisonment. That is executive's fault because you did not take a decision timely. That is why the death, death sentences were commuted into life imprisonments. Now, life imprisonment, as we know today, and then the central government objected to this, saying that you know, only the president can take a decision because this is a case which was investigated by CBI, mm -hmm. etc. The, 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 the Supreme Court in Perari Valen's judgment said that no, you know, Article 161 is not a dead letter in law. If the Council of Ministers of a particular state gives an aid and advice to the governor, the governor is duty bound to follow that aid and advice. So the aid and advice which the Tamil Nadu government gave to the governor was that, okay, please, uh, you know, issue an order of premature release of these convicts. We don't have to keep them in prison at all. And what the criteria for saying this was that, that and there's a complete due process of law there. You know, they, they took so many degrees, they, they, you know, the, the conduct in jail was good, etc. You know, all these factors. So the governor was, when the Supreme Court held, this is Nageshwar Rao's judgment said that the governor is bound by the, uh, the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. So once they took this view in May 22 in Perare Valen's judgment, now for the same yardstick is to be applied for these mm -hmm. prisoners also because they're similarly situated with Perare Valen. 
So this is what the Supreme Court has primarily done today, that, you know, that we can't, you know, take two contrary or two diametrically opposite stands for similarly situated prisoners. So once we have taken a view there, you know, the similar view has to be taken for these people also. This is what, you know, legally speaking, the Supreme Court has done today. Okay. So, Namit, Namit, then help me understand. You're absolutely right. The Supreme Court was very upset. Uh, they had said that the government has been sitting on the clemency plea for such a long while that they have now no choice but to mute the sentence. So, this is the Congress government that, that uh, you know, that was before the BJP government. Is it? Then you're saying it's the fault actually of the central government, the DMK government as well in Tamil Nadu, but the central government as well. It is because of the central governments in you know, in Delhi, See, whether it's the BJP government or the Congress government, because of which Rajiv Gandhi's killers are today walking free. See, it's, it's, I, I won't say it's, you know, it's one particular political party's fault or the other. It's the government of this country which has failed. Mm -hmm. You know, irrespective of whatever party is in power, it's the ruling establishment which, you know, acts through the government and, you know, the president... So they, I won't, you know, name any political party. It's the central mm -hmm. government, you know, irrespective of whatever political party or whether mm -hmm. UP or NDA is in power. It's the central government. And, th and this is important why I'll tell you. Because, you know, in, in, a, in n number of cases, this happens. You know, death row convicts, because the sword is con constantly hanging over their heads. They may be, you know, executed tomorrow or the day after or one month or two months later or one year later. So that is what the Supreme Court said, that, that this is incorrect. You can't, you know, sit on the files. You either decide either way because, the, the, you know, judiciary has given them, you know, what, because in death, in, in, in 302 cases, there are only two punishments, either life imprisonment or capital punishment. The Supreme Court said only in rarest of rare cases will give capital punishments. But once they have given capital punishments, you can't sit over mm -hmm. mercy petitions because that is not under the judicial domain as such. You have to decide it, you know, as expeditiously as possible. You can't, you know, make death row convicts wait like this. And that is what the Supreme Court says. Because you have made them wait for seven odd years, ten odd years, now we are saying that, you know, we are please commute their sentence from capital punishment to life imprisonment because of the agony they have gone through for all uh, this, these number of years. That is, that is the law of the land. So I won't name a so political party. It's the system which has to improve how long? Such. Okay, I get it. it uh, the system has failed. I understand that. Namit... Uh, how long, for exactly how long, did the central government sit on the cle clemency plea of Rajiv Gandhi's killers? 1998, I believe, is when a Tada court, uh, if I remember correctly, gives them uh, the death sentence, if I'm not mistaken. Since then or since when do we start counting uh, the government sitting on the clemency plea? No, so so clemency petition has been has to be counted from the day they applied for clemency petition. Actually, so 1998 or 1999, the Tada court uh, mm -hmm. gave them uh, capital punishment. It was challenged before the top Correct. court. The top court somewhere, I think, as far as I remember, you know, subject to correction, mm -hmm. 2006 is when the Supreme Court also delivered a capital punishment judgment mm -hmm. on them. And then they, you know, on on various on separate occasions, these prisoners applied for clemencies. No, but they were they kept on sitting on those. Clemency petition. Mm. In fact, this went to the Supreme Court, and you know, a constitution bench judgment, you know, decides, you know, whether the central government is uh, empowered to take a decision or the state government is empowered to take a decision because the investigating agency, you know, depending upon who will be, which will be the appropriate government in an appropriate case. So this went to a constitution bench of the Supreme Court also, and they said, okay, in such cases, the uh, uh, the state government will take a decision. And that is why they said the state government, on the basis of the Council of Ministers' aid and advice, the governor under Article 161 is duty-bound to take a decision and mm. duty-bound to accept whatever aid and advice is there. That is why they said 161 is not a dead letter of law. That is why mm. they released Perari Valan. And the same principles which were used in Perari Valan have now been used for these prisoners because they can't use diametrically opposite stands in similarly situated candidates or prisoners. Okay. Uh, I wonder if C... I wonder if C. Rajashekharan uh, is with us. He's joining us live from Chennai. Uh, Mr. Rajashekharan, if, 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 hi, I, is he on with us? All right, he's not. Uh, so, Namit, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much for explaining uh, why the Supreme Court has done what it has done and how things have flowed from there. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, now, before we shift our focus to our political debate, uh, let's first listen in to all the political reactions that have come in so far to the story. This is Sonia Gandhi, above all, is entitled to a personal views. But with greatest respect, the party does not agree with that view, has never agreed with that view, and has made our view consistently clear to you for the last, what, decade or so. 
following the judgment of this court, dated 18-5-2022 for Perry Valen, relaying the Perry Valen, all uh, six have been released now. Yeah, uh, their conduct, their medical condition and their uh, 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 their reformative angle all has been considered, observed and it, they have been uh, released today. Down to our political debate now. Let me introduce our guest to you this evening. We have Dr. Mahima Singh, who is representing the Congress Party. Dr. Saeed Hafiz is a DMK spokesperson. Uh, Karuna Gopal is leader of the BJP. And Mahima Narayan is a senior journalist joining us. Uh, Advocate Mahima Singh, the question will come to you first. On, for, for multiple reasons. Uh, after all, yes, we all understand that this was the prime minister of a country who was assassinated. But his own family, the Gandhi family, had forgiven all his murderers, had forgiven all the convicts. In fact, Priyanka Gandhi, we remember famously, had gone to jail, met Nalini. Sonia Gandhi had said, because of the sake of Nalini's daughter, we are forgiving everyone. Yes, there was anger within us, but now we have forgiven everyone. So much time has passed, you know, there has to be forgiveness. Whatever happened to that stand, if the family has forgiven, why does the Congress party have a problem with Rajiv Gandhi's convicts now working free? Uh, I don't think we have Mahima Singh with us on the phone line. Uh, on the line. We'll try and connect with her. Dr. Saeed Hafiz, let me come to you. Uh, we know that the DMK has worked very hard legally and otherwise as well, legally and politically, I would say, for the release of Rajiv Gandhi's killers. Why? This was the prime minister of a country that was assassinated. Are we to believe that anyone in this country can come in, assassinate your prime minister, and after 20, 30 years, his assassins will be allowed to walk free, aided and uh, supported by political parties, in this case, yours, sir? Madam. Uh, at the outset, we sympathize and empathize with the Congress and the people of the nation that life lost, Rajiv Gandhi's life lost is a loss to the nation. DMK party is also very sympathetic towards it. We do not at any point of time support the, the act which led to the uh, death of our former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. So that is my first point I should make. Second point, Madam, Indian criminal system works on a reformative theory, ma'am. It is not uh, retributive where eye for eye or once somebody has done a mistake, he should rot in jail forever. There has been precedent. It is not the, the Rajiv Gandhi's convict as the first case in Indian history, madam. There had been a murder of father of a nation, Mahatma Gandhi, whose killers, the convicts, have been uh, let free by 16th year, by 16th year. Gose brother was uh, uh, sent home from the jail after 16 years. So it is a reformative theory. And so the rule of law stays here, man. Rule of law, the law of the land is very important, more than the emotions or the political sentiments of the of, of the people or the party or, or, or the state as such. But here, in this case, if you go and look back, the grounds are very clear. The Supreme Court does not say that there had been any violation in the uh, due, legal due process. It had been 30 years. The point is simple, Madam. 161A, the, the power of the Tamil Nadu State Assembly Council of Minister to accept a remission. A remission applied by the convict. In this case, the, the unanimously the Assembly has accepted the remission and passed the resolution. So the problem here is, Madam, we do not want to politicize this. We are seeing it completely on Sentence. humanitarian sir, sir, grounds. Sir, this is obvious. Sir, this is politics. Come on. This is, politics. is politics. This is not what just is humanitarian politics, grounds. We Absolutely understand. humanitarian grounds. The very Absolutely fact, the very grounds, fact. Madam. No, this is not humanitarian, sir. How is this I, humanitarian? I will, you, I will tell you how. What is humanitarian in releasing the killers how, of a I, prime I minister of this? I, I, I will tell you how, madam. I will tell you how. It is in 2000 that there, there was an application to the state government for the remission of all the seven convicts. It is my leader, late Kalinger. He said he will not 
accept remission of all the seven killers. Rather, the remission could apply only for Nalini because she is a woman. She has a newly born daughter. So the daughter should not be punished in the event. So that is the stand of the DMK. And then the case goes on, madam. The case goes on for years, ah. two years. And then the, the, the clemency petition had been had been with the president for 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 a decade. So only then the humanitarian grounds comes in. That okay. is what Supreme Court has also said. So the problem mm. is there. The delay, the emotional mm. trauma that these these convicts were under tremendous pressure, do not knowing when the hanging sentence is going to come to them. So it is this ground and the conduct, mm. madam. The, if you can accuse us of politics, madam, if we have violated the the law of the land. If we have violated any legal procedures, but they, they are all fit. There have been precedent on who can be released. So they have fulfilled all the criteria. Under the scrutiny, it is not just the resolution and manner. Okay. It is a 30-year legal battle under the scrutiny of Apex Court. It is not just a district court or something. The Apex Court has taken a view on this. On view on this, it has condemned the governors for not acting on time. That is what the state government is saying. The governors are not executing their duties which they have to hey, do. Chaudhary. They are fitting, they are sitting with files. I agree with you. Together without, without any I response. agree with you. So I these agree are with the, you. These are the reasons where humanity grounds have I agree, with you. I agree with you that a large part of the blame, a large part of the blame lies at the door of the Congress party. I agree with you. The uh, other ones yes, who, after yes. all, sat on the clemency even, petition, even which, the is governor, why, even the governor, which is why the death the, sentence in, got commuted yes. to life. In, I, in, agree in, in I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. But yes. it was, but it was the DMK that signed on to the file that wanted them to walk free. You are saying everything exactly. was done legally. Of course, everything was done legally. Exactly, ma'am. Uh, that K. is Chaudhary, the view of the Supreme Court also. Joining us that on is the, the view of the Supreme okay. Court also. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Let let the Congress spokesperson come in here. Actually, uh, we have uh, K. Chaudhary, uh, who is joining us on the broadcast. He's a political analyst, but will be giving us the Congress's point of view. Uh, K. Chaudhary, the DMK spokesperson on the show, Dr. Hafiz, uh, Dr. Saeed Hafiz is telling me that everything was done legally. Give us one illegality that happened. The sure, fact is, emotions way. are one thing and the law is one thing. And if, no, and one minute, and if anyone is to blame, anyone is to blame for what has happened today, it is the Congress party. Okay, can I, Shreya ji? So, basically, you know, Shreya, yes, the, please, the, 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 go ahead. There is, there is, there is a very important saying, you know, Mahatma Gandhi once said that the law of the conscience is much more greater than the law of the nation or law that is written in the constitution. Here in this case, if we go into the legality of the case, how the remission was uh, done, then we lose our rights to raise our protest in the Bilkis Pano remission case. We lose the right to condemn Asmal Kassab to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the gallows. We lose the right to, uh, to defend Afzal Guru's right uh, uh, execution as per law of the land. Now a particular group of people have waged a war against the Indian Union. They have assassinated the Prime Minister of a democratic India and now they are seeking remission because of maybe some political angle. We are not going into that. Now, even if the Gandhi Parivar, because of their magnanimity, they might have pardoned the killers of Rajiv Gandhi. But as a congressman, a born congressman and will die as a congressman, can I forget that the prime minister of our country in the first place was assassinated because of some terrorists? Now, do you want to glorify those terrorists? I, I believe none of the countrymen will agree to it. And leave aside the politics out here, ma'am. The basic question that is there, what accusation... What, what were the accusations against these people? They waged a war against the nation. They killed our prime minister. That is the first and most important thing. Leave aside the, that Rajiv Gandhi belonged to the Congress or uh, I am a congressman, so I am speaking in his favor. But then the fact has to be understood that if I today speak in favor of Nalini getting a remission from the government, then I should also say that, okay, Bilkis uh, uh, Banu's killers also, uh, rapists and uh, uh, those people who are committed crime in Gujarat, they also deserve a remission as per the law of the land. Okay. But then we lose the right when you criticize a okay. particular uh, thing and then 
suggest that okay this is as per law of the land that's my limited point we have point of view in this okay i i get your point i, I get your point you not answered my question on the fact that the Congress government sat he for ten years, years, almost ten you years, cannot, on the clemency cannot, petition, which is why, equate, which is which cannot, is why it was commuted to life. You cannot equate. Like, you, cannot, you cannot equate release of Bilkis Banu killer and the the convicts of Rajiv Gandhi. This is two different story, madam. This has come after the scrutinizing of Supreme Court. Whereas in Bilkis Banu case, the district judge who was in the panel was against the remission. There is two big difference. I would like to enlighten this to the Congress spokesperson. Do not equate the, the act where the Bilkis Banu killers were released and Rajiv convicts were, were released. There are two different things, totally opposite poles. Let us not Dr. divert Saeed, it. Okay. Let us not there are two, it. Dr. Saeed, you know, before, before, just a minute, before K. Chaudhary came in to speak and give us the Congress's point of view, you said this is not politics. You know, we've all seen pictures of Perari Valan when he was released. He went and Mr. Stalin hugged him. He's your chief minister. If this is not politics, what is it? You are glorifying yes. the killers madam, of a former prime minister. Madam, we are not glorifying, madam. It was a courtesy visit. It was a courtesy visit to the chief minister, thanking him for the legal help which the Tamil Nadu state government did. If that is the case, madam, I can show you pictures of Sanjay that posing with Yogi Adityanath in fact, uh, promoting some some government organization or policies in the U Uttar Pradesh. So this is not, we don't want to politicize it. It was a courtesy appointment which the chief minister did. That That is it. That is it. And and he never hugged him. Perari Valen came and hugged the chief minister. So it, it, it will be so inappropriate and inhuman to push somebody when they are approaching for a for for a social or a or a courtesy. So that is the thing. Okay. That is not that is not okay. glorifying. You know, we'll PMK we'll, does we'll not talk glorify, about PMK does not glorify any convict. Does not glorify any convict. That is our stand. Okay. Okay, if you don't glorify a convict, then where, where is the question of this courtesy call and hug? That is a question, but wait, just a minute. Let me get Dinkar Lanka in, uh, representing the BJP this evening. Mr. L uh, Dinkar Lanka, thank you for your time. Where does the BJP stand in all of this? It is after all under your watch that uh, six convicts, and if you count Perari Velen, seven convicts will be walking out of jail. And these are convicts who are accused of... Uh, assassinating a prime minister of this country, a former prime minister of this country. Yeah. This episode should be discussed in two parts. One is the legal part. As far as the Supreme Court is concerned, whatever the decision it yes. has taken, it should be get upheld. Because the uh, system of judiciary should not be questioned. It has independence. Uh, it it expresses its view. Keeping in view of those facts, already Perari Valan has released by invoking Article 142, whatever the, um, the uh, relief which can be provided by the Supreme Court uh, by increasing its power. Uh, in similar way, it has given today its uh, decision uh, pertaining to the remaining six convicted. Uh, but where does the uh, BJP also? stand on this? Hence, we know what hence, happened, hence, Mr. Lanka, today. Uh, one, one, where one, does one the thing, BJP stand on it? One thing, please. Uh, one minute, please. Uh, um, that is that is a legal part. There is no question of any ambiguity to discuss and make uh, any adverse comment on Supreme Court decision. It is not at all fair on any uh, uh, political party or any individual. That is one, one thing. And as far as political uh, scenario is concerned, let you observe for the past 31 years, uh, at the time of the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi, AADMK was alliance partner with Congress party. Today, DMK is the alliance partner with Congress, but both this DMK and AADMK has governed for these 30 years. And uh, the, 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 both the parties have expressed their view to release these convicted, uh, whoever the, they are participated in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination. Congress party hasn't convinced their uh, uh, alliance partners that is uh, one contradiction. And another contradiction right. is uh, mm. uh, another contradiction is very clear that uh, Sonia Gandhi ji openly told that she expressed her pardon on uh, the killing of her husband Rajiv Gandhi in capacity of uh, in, in capacity of um, Rajiv Gandhi's wife uh, and Rajiv Gandhi's daughter. I am not talking about politically. That's why I am mentioning as the relations alone. Uh, even Priyanka Vada. 
she herself went to the co- uh, uh, jail and uh, they had uh, discussed with uh, uh, okay. the convicted uh, people and she very clearly told that uh, we don't have any kind of uh, um, uh, uh, any kind of uh, anger and anguish against these uh, okay. convicted people. So this, this essentially you're saying it's absolutely case, fine. How Today, the Congress party leaders give the uh-huh. distinct statement to their uh, party leaders. This is the double tongue. It is not uh, fair. It is not uh, correct. They hadn't convinced their alliance partners. Prashant, at the Pratap same time, Singh, they are not following their leaders. of the Congress party. Okay. Prashant, Prashant Pratap Singh, your spokesperson of the Congress party. What is this double speak? Is what the BJP is asking. First, the DMK has been your ally, partner is your ally, partner. They are the ones who sign on to uh, Rajiv Gandhi's killers walking out free. In fact, it is, uh, you know, it is once they requested the Supreme Court that the Supreme Court uh, made that allowance for Perari Velen. And based on Perari Velen walking free, the other six are walking free as well. So, A, this is your own ally, Prashant Tatap Singh. And then what, what is this double speak? How do we understand this double speak? Today, the Congress party officially is coming out and saying this is against the spirit of India. Then you had the Gandhi family saying, we have forgiven everyone, let them go. Uh, so let me first come and uh, we, I, though I'm coming as a spokesperson, but I'm co- here we are talking about the prime minister of the country, the ex prime minister of the country. So I'm, it is, he, he's not been seen as a party, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would say he's not seen as a person who's just from the Congress party. He was a prime minister of India. So, so it is every citizen which has been uh, disturbed by this, uh, judgment. You know, I I was thinking about the jurisdiction which Supreme Court has uh, over uh, the Article 142. I wanted to actually talk about under Article 142, the the blanket judgment which has come across. I think that would affect the future judgments as well. And when you talk about uh, regarding your question, when you talk about that the Gandhis. It is their personal. It's a very personal choice to them. It is. It is. You. You. You know. The first step towards uh, getting over a trauma is forgiveness. So it is them giving forgiveness is very different from how the law takes its course. So coming back to. Uh, but what has happened has been perfectly legal. This is the Supreme Court of India, after all, that has given the decision it had, and the DMK is saying, "Tell us one thing that we have done that is illegal." Please. Due Obviously, process of law has been followed. They have already spent 30 years. The center, the you know, the center has sat on the remission tree. In this case, it was the Congress Party, which is why the death was commuted to life. So, due the process first, of law has taken place. Firstly, the center sat on it for a very long time, which it should have taken a decision. Uh, uh, that's uh-huh. one thing. Secondly, coming to a, a law can be interpreted by the courts. The courts are supposed to interpret. But in under Article 142, there are certain discretionary powers which are given to Supreme Court. We do not agree with the, the way that has been interpreted. And they have given a ruling which is completely against, uh, I, I would believe, uh, uh, something which we, we would have not agreed. See, for example, now, if Kasab, let's okay. say we, we are not talking about Kasab. Okay, why was, okay. Uh, Kasab was a terrorist. If today this happened, this is a terrorist act. And he was, he, the Prime Minister, the reason he was killed, Sri Rajiv Gandhi was killed, was because he sent a peacekeeping force to, uh, you know, Sri Lanka. And this peacekeeping force, it was an attack on India itself. So it is a terrorist act. It is just the head of the state. He was the head of the state when he gave that judgment. So if it is a terrorist act, my question to everybody, the listeners, the viewers, and even possibly the court is, if he they were a terrorist and we did the same thing in case of Kasab, the outcry would have been huge. Just because it's a 30-year-old case, you cannot say, and there is a, you know, a decision by the Supreme Court itself has said, that they can't be blanket judgment if there is a precedent uh, which has been created. You can't create a blanket judgment that they have served X amount of time. No, the, but today is, the Supreme it, Court it, it, has said the, the rules that apply to Perari Valen have to apply to the other six as well. After all, all I six agree. were accused I, of the I, same I crime. Agree. I agree. Madhavan, Narayan, case, I, I, Madhavan Narayan, just come in here. I just come in here as someone who's tracked the case for a fairly long time. Uh, and it's it's dragged on forever and ever. God knows that. Uh, 
you know, the DMK spokesperson said, yeah, this is not politics. This is about humanity. This is about law. I think everyone seems to forget that there, are, there were 14 other people killed along with Rajiv Gandhi that day. And no one has spoken to their families about whether those families have forgiven these six convicts or even Perari Velen. I, I want to understand from you uh, where the politics lies in all of this. Yeah, is that you've been discussing too much of politics. After mentioning that the Congress party talked about spirit of India, what is the spirit of India? It is spirit of India is against terrorism, but the spirit of India also includes uh, uh, people like yeah. Gandhi and Buddha and Mahavir Jain. This is the land of Ahimsa, but this is also the land of Shama, where girls are named Shama, which means forgiveness. Let me also, uh, lest you accuse me of being, uh, you know, this is a country which is in which half-baked jingoists are claiming to be patriots. Uh, that is a lower level discourse. I want to avoid that because I always come to your debate to raise the standards, not lower it. So let me say that the Constitution of India explicitly allows words like reprieve and pardon, and they exist for a reason. This is to permit extraordinary circumstances where things can be decided on the basis of human jurisprudence. And as one of your panelists, uh, I think, uh, said very correctly, we have a reformative jurisprudence. Now, let me also bring up the fact that this is not just about law. This is also about geopolitics. Geopolitics and Sikkim was not a part of India in 1965. And uh, to, who knows, tomorrow, uh, parts of Sri Lanka may be part of the Republic of India, which is a union of states. So there are ways of looking at it with a political philosophy in mind and um, jurisprudence in mind, the idea of justice in mind, and not just go by legal details. And what even for legal details, the Supreme Court has been explicitly given a permission under the Constitution using words like reprieve and pardon, on which specific articles exist under the Constitution. Hmm. Let me also bring into context two things. Okay. One is Gurmeet Ram Rahim, who's a rap rapist, has been uh, allowed parole and political leaders are facilitating him. The Bilkis Banu rape convicts have been honored and uh, celebrated in some ways. And therefore, the, uh, any war against the state is need not necessarily by a gun shooting suicide bomber from um, Sri Lanka. It can also be so-called citizens of India who violate the spirit of India. Let me also quote right now, uh, because the, you have to really understand geopolitics to understand the Rajiv Gandhi assassination. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi was lured into uh, sending Indian troops by the then Sri Lanka government and uh, then got into trouble. Poor Rajiv Gandhi gave his life for this. He is a father as well as the prime minister, as well as the president of the Congress party. <clears throat> now, the Congress party has to act as an institution and therefore it cannot echo the line taken by Priyanka Gandhi uh, because institutions cannot respond with the casual elegance of an individual. So don't go by the posturing. The Congress uh, admits implicitly that there is politics com uh, and politics can include DMK politics, Congress politics, coalition politics, secular politics. Politics has many layers and we need a, a calibre nuance. Let me also quote Priyanka Gandhi who said in an interview beautifully, I wish we had the depth to understand what she said. We are so if you only understand law, please understand that intellect and philosophy stand above law, not below it. If you cannot respect people who understand philosophy, the fault is with you. So this is what uh, Priyanka Gandhi says. The minute you realize you're not a victim and the other person is as much a victim of the same circumstances as you are, then how can you put yourself in a position where you are someone to forgive someone else? Because you know the victimhood has disappeared. This is not just literature, this is humanity, and our constitution based on justice, social, economic, and political, at the core of it has humanity, and the Supreme Court has a right to interpret the constitution according to the principles of the humanity. Let me also conclude by saying that life convicts, I don't care when Congress uh, appealed for clemency and when it withdrew. These are technical details based on a combination of politics and circumstances, but let me say that uh, you know, there is a certain case constitutionally and legally uh, because life convicts do not ordinarily more, uh, last more than 14 years in jail. It is perhaps inappropriate to call uh, all the people as killers because some of them were 
part of an extended conspiracy involving various levels of ac accomplished uh, behavior. Some of it is in gray areas. So it is best to put the case behind, keeping in mind that the Constitution very clearly approves uh, reprieve and pardon, respecting the Supreme Court, because if the Supreme Court can, in the case of Gujarat riots, take, uh, uh, you, know, if, uh, you know, release some people, if in the case of some other cases, allow clemency, which has been there in the Constitution, then let this uh, be case, uh, a case of structured clemency in which people who've spent 30 years in jail are okay. technically to have, uh, served two life sentences. Okay. It, it, the families are not the ultimate uh, judges in this case. And I agree that is apply uh, with you technically. But the Supreme Court is the one that takes a composite, considered view of everything. We have to respect the honorable judges on these things. And that is if what they have done. If we don't respect the judges in this case, then every case can be opened up. And please understand there is geopolitics behind the Absolutely. whole thing. Absolutely. So, uh, okay. Uh, and look, all of us can have a point of view, but can you can you afford to disagree with the Supreme Court? No. I mean, as I said, this case has dragged on, dragged on for a very long time. And the Supreme Court has done what it needed to do. The six convicts of Rajiv Gandhi now free. Perarivaran uh, Perari was set free in May this year. So that is that. The Supreme Court has said what it has said. Uh, but I think all of you are, all of us are entitled to a view. The Congress is entitled to a view. I'm entitled to, uh, to a view. The DMK is entitled to a view. And you, of course, are entitled to a view as well. I'm going to leave it there. This has been a good discussion. Thank you all very much. K. Choudhury, Prashant Pratap Singh, uh, Dr. Uh, Saeed Hafiz, Dinkar Lanka and Madhavan Narayan. Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. I'm slipping into a quick break on the show. There is news coming up on the other